I want to, before I start, I want to state that Gabriel could not come today as she experienced pain every time she goes out. So therefore, I told her I would make a video of the talk and put it on a thumb drive so she can listen to it anytime she wants. She misses everybody very, very much, but she's not mobile. I'd like to say a prayer before I uh, start. Dear Lord, please guide each and everything I say. And, and uh, I wish that everything I say may be for your glory. I ask this in the name of your son, Jesus, amen. This is the story about how God works miracles in your life and how I came over, overcame hardship. It's no secret what God can do, and you will see the American uh, amazing miracles unfold. I was born on December 31st of, of 1951 of alcoholic parents and was reminded each and every day of my life that I was unwanted and should have been aborted. I had a lot of problems in school and also there was a lot of parental abuse at home. I ran away from home when I was 14 and when my parents got me back, they put me in a mental hospital by convincing our, doc our family doctor to commit me as a problem child. I started drinking in there because I was in a security ward and there was a lot of older people that used to smuggle it in after they went out in day parole. I got in a lot of trouble because of my drinking, because of my attitude and I get a big mouth. And I spent a lot of time in solitary confinement. I got out of the hospital in 1973 and I might say I was a full-blown alcoholic. The whole family moved to Kitchener in 1973. And every time I had the chance, I, I drank. And I always ended up in uh, psychiatric uh, uh, in, in KDB Hospital for being, uh, for being drunk. And I was a mess. I wanted to die more than anything else in this world because of the pain of my life and upbringing. I joined AA in 1975 and stayed sober for nine and a half years. I might say I was dry because I had no goals, no happiness, and I wasn't working the steps or anything. So I wasn't doing anything in my life. I decided to move in Toronto in 1985 after a lot of painful events happened. And after going there, I ended up on the street because of my drinking. I did street vending which I also did in 1981 when I went up there before. That's when I met Julie in 1981. And she became a very, very, very good friend. A few times Julie caught me passed out at my cart and asked me if I had a place to stay. When I told her no, she told me to move in the apartment with her and her common-law husband, Rick. And I said yes, even though I didn't think it was a good idea. Rick was a drinker as well as I was, and Julie was sick, uh, sick of us. She figured there was no hope for me. I mean, uh, she figured there was no hope to get Rick sober, but she thought there might be, be might hope. For, there might be hope for me. A few weeks after I moved in, she came in the kitchen where I slept and she kicked me and she said, Joe, we're going out for a coffee. To that I replied, Julie, I was drinking all night for crying out loud, leave me alone. She said, Joe, I didn't ask you, I told you not get ready or else. I did go, but she tricked me. She found out there was an AA meeting across the road from where we lived at, at, at the church, and that's where she brought me. She took me there and she told me she had a knife in her purse and if I tried to leave, she would use it. 
I was not funny. <laughs> I waited until she looked around and made my move. I followed she followed me outside the door and she stabbed me. I spent the night in the emergency in, in, in the hospital. And I was told by the emergency personnel that if the knife had, what, had went one sixteenth of an inch to the left, I would have been dead. I am thoroughly convinced that she saved my life. After getting out of the hospital, I went back to Rick and and she was always making, and Julie always made sure I went to AA. Then after a few weeks suggested I move back to Kitchener because she said there was no way I could stay sober with Rick's drinking. I came back to Kitchener and moved in with mom and dad and kept going to AA and kept staying sober. I met Gabriel January 3rd, 1988 and it was love at first sight. We went together for a couple of months, then there was an AA convention in Niagara Falls, so me and Gabriel went there together. On our way back, I asked her to marry me. We got married on May 24, 1988, and we've been together ever since. That has been the best years of my whole life. I've been sober ever since moving out of Julie's only to drink once, seven months after we got married, after me and Gabriel got married. And the only reason for that is I had a reservation in the back of my mind that I could safely drink. And that was stupid of me. I started coming to Trinity January 2010 and it has been an uphill battle and growing experience ever since I came. I attended Bible studies in Alpha and got baptized and renewed my vows with, with Gabriel after 22 years as she always wanted a church wedding. And we did all that in 2010. I'm a work in progress, we all are. I'm so grateful for Goodrun to bring me here and all the girls in the prayer room for praying me here. My accomplishments through my sobriety have been remarkable. I've been sober since January 1st, 1989. I will be 34 years in two months, which is someone, which is something no one in my family, and I trace my, my, my family history five generations back, nobody has ever done that. The only other person that has ever stayed sober is my mother who stayed sober for 10 months and went back drinking. All, on, all my life I, would never, I was told I'd never amount to nothing. In 2008, after a fire in our apartment, which nobody got hurt, I quit smoking. My life goal was to, com uh, to complete high school. After all, my, my sister uh, completed high school, my brother did, and I quit when I was, six, when I was in grade six. So in 2013, after encouragement from Kerry, I went back to high school. And in 2016, I graduated grade 12. I owe everything to God and AA. A person's life is not a hardship. A person's life is, your life is profitable in the preparation for your future. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18 says that in everything, give thanks for that is the will of God. Do not give thanks for only the good things, give thanks for everything. I'm not the person I want to be. I'm not the person I ought to be. But thank God I'm not the person I used to be. And that's all.